episode 32, part 3 of Kenya's premier sports video podcast, the Three Quarters Podcast. Today we're shooting from Kilimani and we start by thanking our hosts for giving us this opportunity to shoot episode 32 which will be dropping in the course of the week on our YouTube channel and our, and our Facebook page. We start by thanking the viewers, the followers, the subscribers for taking your time each and every week to watch an episode of the Three Quarters Podcast and on behalf of the great team that's the Three Quarters Podcast, all we can say ni asanteni na shukran sana. With every passing week, the road to Japan uh, draws closer. The Rugby World Cup in Japan 2019 is what we are talking about. We do think that the Kenya Simbas uh, deserve to be there. We do think they are going to be there, but they do need our support. So how do you give them? Uh, how do you give them uh, your support? Join the Road to Japan hashtag. Every, every time we talk about the Simbas, road to, hashtag Road to Japan. Let's just gonna support for these boys because we do believe that these boys are going to be in Japan in 2019 and therefore being ambassadors for what's this great country of ours. And the truth and the fact of the matter is that the Kenya Simbas are the supercells of rugby in Kenya. They do things right, our stature in the world of rugby grows. They do things wrong, we drop in rankings. So therefore, road to, road to Japan hashtag, let's support these boys. This is Ngashi official noisemaker, Jeringus Kenyana. And I'm Demi Duffield. The IWAF World Junior Championships is underway from the 12th of July. Um, as the uh, First Lady declares Nairobi fit uh, to host the world, what are your thoughts on this? We'll start off with you, Gus. Well, it's a fantastic opportunity that we've been given by the world and uh, that the First Lady has uh, given us uh, the green light. I'll actually welcome the world here. Uh, it's a good opportunity for Kenya. We, can actually sh we should show the world that we're a great country, it's a beautiful country, and we can have them here and they can have a good time and compete well and uh, enjoy themselves as well. Yeah. Um, at some point in the beginning of the year, um, the local organizing committee, which I must mention, is being chaired <laughs> by former Kenya Rugby Union yeah, chairman. Rugby guy. Yes, the rugby guy, <laughs> Mwangimo there, uh, had actually put uh, their contingencies in play because they didn't think they were going to meet the deadlines. IAAF told them that, look, contingencies are not going to fly and you need to meet your deadlines. So number one is uh, kudos to Mwangimo there and his team for organizing a tournament and sticking to the uh, what was prescribed by IAAF and getting it done in time. Yep. IAAF has already given them uh, the, the go ahead and the first lady coming on board and saying that okay you guys are ready to host is actually a good thing. Uh, my most important point on this issue would be that very many people do not know the IAAF World Ch Junior Championships are happening right now in Nairobi and as a matter of fact this is actually the last edition of the, of the World Junior Championships. These are our future stars. So. Kawaida guys normally wait for things happening in Berlin, in London, and of course you don't have, there's no way you're going to be going there to watch these yeah. things. These things are in your backyard yep. right now. Make a point of just, come on, I mean, take an afternoon off. Yes, they do. Go to, go to Kasarani, sit down and see what's happening there. Mm -hmm. And actually, more, important, more importantly, just see the kind of work that the lo local organizing committee has done. Yeah. Then I, I think this would be a step in the right direction towards having guys appreciate local sports more, I think. Yeah. All right, now we're going to go into uh, football, uh, or rather the football world, where it's all about transfers, um, sealed moves, as well as potential moves. Um, we'll start off with uh, Romelu Lukaku uh, moving to Man U. Okay. Uh, Nash, start, start us off with that. Uh, Man U fans, of course, are very happy now. <laughs> <laughs> They're a very happy bunch, uh, making noise all over social media. Uh, Romelu Lukaku moving from uh, Everton to Manchester United. The good thing about Lukaku is that first he's an out-and-out -out central striker. He's yeah. very mobile. He'll give you the numbers. Uh, he's a 20-goal striker season. Mm -hmm. My only issue has been you signed Paul Pogba. You signed all this big time. You signed uh, Mkhitaryan. Mm -hmm. But they've been unable to gel at Manchester United. Yeah. So it doesn't matter who you bring in. It's all about whether someone is able to fit into the system. Yeah. And that's why I keep on saying, shut up until the Premier League season starts. <laughs> Just keep quiet, yeah. then we'll see what this guy yeah. does. When Thierry Henry joined us and all, he was crap. <laughs> Look at what happened. So just keep quiet, keep chill. Let's see how it's going to Yeah. <laughs> all right. And um, Alexandra Lacazette to Arsenal. Yeah. Uh, that's a fantastic move, I would say, uh, considering that um, he's, uh, he's been one of the highest scoring strikers in Europe. Yeah, and, uh, and it's now a record signing for Arsenal. So, uh, <laughs> this time around, they decided to break bank. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, having them having signed this early, it's a, it's a, it's a, good, it's a good sign, because these guys can now get the chemistry right, and uh, they can know how to play with each other, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
All right, and of course, there's Wayne Rooney moving back to Everton. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as an Arsenal fan, uh, we're seeing Wayne seeing Wayne Rooney in an Everton shirt uh, really disturbs me because of the goal he scored, I think, in 2003 when he was 16 years old, just before moving to Manchester United. Mm -hmm. I think for Wayne Rooney, it's more of a thing of going back home. Yeah. Uh, he's done his stint at Manchester. Uh, most people forget that Wayne Rooney started his career as a very young guy. He started at 16 years old. He was in the England team at 18 years. Uh, uh, prior to moving to Manchester United, of course. He's fairly young, about 34 years, when he's retiring. But guys forget that he's had a very long career, about 16 years. And he's successful. And he's and a long and successful yeah. at least club, not country. <laughs> <laughs> so him going back to um, uh, Everton is just, I think, a way of signing out before of course, uh, he calls it a day in, in football. But I think for Everton, it's a good move because Wayne Rooney brings uh, the dressing room fever. Yeah. And I think it's going to impact well on Everton this coming season. All right, now we'll move on to the F1. Mm. Please, please, <laughs> just, 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 please. Great surprise uh, for an Österreich. Yeah. That's basically the uh, Australian Grand, uh, Austrian, sorry, Austrian. Grand, <laughs> Grand Prix yeah, happening in Spielberg. Yeah. 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 At the Red Bull Ring. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not the F1 guru, I think. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I just needed help with the name. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a, quite a hard name, man. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, the Austrian Grand Prix. Uh, he had voluntary voters of Mercedes, Team Mercedes, winning it. Uh, second was uh, Sebastian Vettel of Ferrari. Third came in Ricardo, Daniel, Daniel Ricardo of Red Bull. And uh, as the driver standing stand, uh, as, as the <laughs> log looks, <laughs> the driver standings, this is how it looks. Uh, Sebastian Vettel leading with 171 points. Lewis Hamilton coming in second, 20 points behind, 151. Then we have Valtteri, Valtteri Bottas of Mercedes, 136. All right, now we'll move on to our bonus topic. Um, with Nairobi hosting the IAAF World Junior Championships, mm -hmm. do you think that uh, this is an indication that Kenya is now, you know, can now competitively bid for international tournaments? Um, I think it's a good sign. Uh, I think Kenya's issue has always been one, it's an issue of management, sports, it's not that we don't have the capacity. I mean, when you go to South Africa, it's not like they have the high-speed trains and all, the, all that stuff. Yeah. They just have good infrastructure. Uh, I think uh, uh, Kenya has the capability to host these uh, tournaments, um, but the issue is just management. And I would not suggest that we be ambitious and go to global tournaments <laughs> just even start with africa tournaments region you know yeah. regional tournament not really regional. continental Se <laughs> <Singapore> is small <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take, <laughs> take us to the continent yeah. level you know host uh an african cup of nations which yeah. comes with its share amount share amount of uh of uh, of focus from the world then poly poly just build on that build on that because truth in the fact of them it's just an issue of management and i think the iwaf shows that we do have competent managers and again i'll repeat that the chairman of the <laughs> local organization <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mr mwangi for and his team i, I mean for kudos, the chairman yeah kudos kudos to, kudos to them yeah well i think uh, i'll agree with you nash uh it's a fantastic opportunity for us to show the world that we're capable and i believe we are if at all as you said management level if the guys do it right will actually show the world that we are capable these guys who are trying to maybe sneak in tenders over there and uh, <laughs> Iba Iba stuff, yeah. I, I hope uh, it, it doesn't happen yeah. and this tournament goes on well and yeah. successful, considering it's the last, it's the last of it. Yeah. So um, I, I hope that it goes well and you can prove to the world that Kenya is a false record. There's a guy who's snuck in a tender for cutting the grass. <laughs> <laughs> and he's charging me and he's charging like million grass 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 for mama. <laughs> Although on that note, I think um, only way is up, um, really. Uh, if you look at, I mean, it's a small scale tournament, but just looking at like the Safari Sevens. Yes, it's basically uh, most of the time it's invitation, mm -hmm. you know, but it is international still, and it's been happening year in year out. So only way is up. Yep, I do agree with you. <laughs> All right, that's it for part three. Um, tell them where to find us. Uh, like our Facebook page. Uh, follow us on Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is Ngashi, official noisemaker, Jeringus Kanyana. And I'm Demi Duffield. See you next week for episode 33. Yeah.